received a lot of external sources for some motivation and inspiration. And one of the sources I used was Dr. Martini. Uh, I listened to a couple of his audio cassettes, and I wrote down a few of the quotes that really touched me and helped me. So I just want to share a few of those with you today, and hope that you may also give some benefit as well. So what are you willing to do to make your vision a reality? Are you willing to give up a few comforts, a few luxuries? Are you willing to look at your priorities and say, maybe I need to reevaluate these again? You know, one of the things I had, I didn't want to give up my sleep. I was like, why would I give up my health for a health-focused you know, career just to pass the test? You know, I didn't want to do that. Maybe I don't have to, but now I'm willing to do that because I was able to see how much I really want this. And I, in the end, I found out that it's, you actually do better on tests if you're well-balanced. So sleep is good. <laughs> and I actually was able to function more efficiently. So it worked out both ways. Are you willing to do whatever it takes, travel whatever distance, and pay whatever price necessary to share your dream? You know, what are you really willing to do? I was afraid of leaving the Midwest. I was like, well, you know, this college is in St. Louis, close to my family, all right, let's do this. And I didn't want to move out here. I was afraid. But then once I was able to make the move, it meant so much more to me. So if you're inspired by what you do and put forth every, ask, every effort to what you do, the doors of life will open. So the moment that I moved out here, the moment I made a decision that, you know, it's worth the move, it's worth, you know, driving across the country 2,220-something miles in a 78 VW at 55 miles an hour, it took six days, by the way, it was worth it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I'm here to do. I'm ready. Let's rock. So, and since then, opportunities have just been flooding towards me, and I'm just so grateful for that. The key is to follow your heart, your dream, no matter what. Let neither pain nor pleasure interfere with the pursuit of your purpose. Let neither support nor challenge interfere with the pursuit of your dream. Pain nor pleasure. It may get a little rough. It may get a little painful. But I think every obstacle that you see is really more of an opportunity for growth on your path of life. So it may get a little uncomfortable, and that's okay. Just probably a sign that you're about ready to grow a little bit. Well, that should be exciting. Don't let pleasure get in the way either. You know, um, don't have too much fun. You know, buckle down sometimes, but also, you know, balance is key. <clears throat> Support nor challenge. I was supported by my family after I was challenged by their belief systems. The challenge led me to really reconfirm how much I wanted this and what my beliefs were, and it allowed me to really see what it meant to me. And then once I felt that, I had support. But I had support to the extent where they believed so much in me that I didn't apply myself to the extent that I needed to. So, keep yourself in check. Don't ever lose sight of your dream. So the question I had once I had this huge dream, this huge vision, was how long am I going to accomplish this goal? How am I going to accomplish this dream? You know, for two years I had this huge dream, freaking ginormous, and I felt so small. I was like, I felt about this big. Like, how am I going to accomplish this big goal when I'm such a little person? At least that's what I thought. I'm encouraging you to study everything you can. Take every class you can. Don't sit there with a the standard below yourself. Don't sit there with a the standard based just on the teacher. Have a standard of becoming a master. Have a standard so big that you become yourself, you make yourself the best and the greatest that you can possibly be. I'll get back to the dream thing too. I still want to repeat myself. It's not just about passing a test, it's about mastering what you're here to master. It's about serving humanity to the greatest extent possible. And learning everything you can to be the greatest chiropractor on the face of the earth. It's about having the certainty and the ability to offer the greatest service that you're capable of to mankind. When you take initiative to become the best you can be and apply all that you are in every aspect of your life, you allow a force from within to flow through you. Are you really that small? Is that just perception? I think Alan Watts said that you are an aperture from which the universe is looking through at itself. So, if that's the case, and with the universal energy within us, if we allow that to flow through, we use that infinite source of energy, and what can't we accomplish? What finite thing in this physical realm can get in the way of the infinite source within? And if you can connect to that and express that to its fullest extent, are you really that small? I don't think so. I think you're as big as what you allow yourself to be. 
I think the only one that's factor that can get in the way is your own mindset, your own fear. And I think once you learn to connect to your heart center, let go of the ego, ego you allow that, that unconditional love to flow through so you can serve from the to the it's not possible. Because they need it. Don't ever forget the moment you're called to become a chiropractor. Don't ever forget the moment it whispered to you and said, that's it. And don't you ever walk away from your class, from your test in your classes without saying thank you. Because everything you go through is a test to prepare you for being something great. Every class you take is going to serve you, I promise you. It's straight from Dr. Martini. And I was like, what? How can I be thankful for a test and I just thought I failed? You know? Like, what's up with that? How do you get that perception? Throughout life, you have tons of opportunities to learn, whether it's in the form that you think of or not. And if you always see it as an opportunity to learn something from any environment, any situation, classroom or not, you're going to get more out of it. If you're going to be here anyway and put you know, money and the time in, all your effort into it, get the most out of it that you can. Do, you, do yourself that justice so you can serve humanity to the greatest extent that you possibly can. They need it. <coughs> You know, so I wondered at one time, how I was taking this class to make me a master chiropractor. You know, biochemistry, microbiology, general pathology, oh my. You know, I, I was sitting in the Krebs cycle, I'm like, when will I ever have to explain the Krebs cycle to a patient? How does this apply? Like, I was so frustrated, and then I probably would have led me to fail it twice. The third time, though, third time I took biochemistry one and two, I loved it. I was like, oh my god, you know, it's my two He's like, isn't that cool? And you guys know John. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, that is cool. Like. All those little things that are going on in this book, that's powered by the nervous system. We get to interact with that. We have the ability, the opportunity to influence someone's metabolism along with tons of other things. You're going to be working with the most powerful structure ever known in the universe, the nervous system. You better know that nervous system. You better know the ins and outs of that. Because you're going to be working with the power that influences every cell in the body. Every cell. And that's a pretty big deal. So, Crep cycle is totally important. <laughs> and I also think that the greater the detail that you study the human body, the more of appreciation that you cultivate for it. And the more that you can appreciate the little aspects of the human body, the more you're going to be inspired by it. The more that you're inspired by what you're studying, the easier it is to obtain and retain the information. Because you can apply it to your life. And that gives it meaning. And if it gives it meaning, you can learn it a hell of a lot easier than if you're like, I just got to pass this. So that's a small vision. Oh, I think, you know, over the years, my math has slowed down considerably. It's like, when is it time when the battery dies? Dr. B. Martini said, I noticed that the students had difficulty passing tests had little visions. They were just interested in passing the test, and that's the way I was, you know, biochemistry, one and two. I just want to pass the test. I just want to pass the class so I can get that degree. But that was a small vision. So everything I try to study now, I view from a chiropractic perspective. By viewing the information from my chiropractic lenses, it allows me to extract and retain the information because I can see how it applies to what I will be working with in practice, and I'm inspired by that. So if you're inspired by what you study, you can retain it a lot easier and you're able to apply that. Also, start envisioning your practice the way you dream. You know, from the very beginning, I started doing this master practice thing. You know, it's in my journal, in big bold letters, quotations. I got a little lightning bolt on it, and every time I open it up, I hear thunder rolling. I was like, the master practice. And so I just started listing all the things I wanted. You know, what does it look like? And so just, just to get you started, if you're like, you don't know where to begin, the list that I start, you know, where is it located? What's around you? What's the environment like? Are there mountains? Is there desert? Is there an ocean? You know, how big is it? How many people would you like to see? What unique features would you like to incorporate? <laughs> My dream just keeps growing. Right now it's like an octagonal shaped building with like open air, you know, dressing room in the center, with like an airstrip in the corner, a lake in the middle, an emergency care clinic. This keeps growing and there's no limit. There's no <laughs> limit to your dreaming. You know, your only limit, like I said, is your mind. And don't, don't let that get in the way. It's a lot more fun if you work from the heart, or you play from the heart. You must raise the standard and see a vision bigger than yourself in order to get beyond yourself. You can never grow beyond yourself until you keep calling bigger than yourself. So I was very, I felt very small. I was in my shell for what, the first two quarters I was here. I was like, hey, you know, me, my little shell. Because I saw 
I, I can only see how it impacted me, how my presence impacted me. You know, what, what, what would they think about me if I gave a presentation? What if I failed? You know, I was like, I don't care. I was like, I have to do this. You know, I, everything that I do is for a larger purpose. It's not about me. It's about humanity. You know, it's not about you. It's what you can do. So once you start to see outside of yourself, you lose sight of that fear because you're working from the heart space again, and you're able just to give unconditionally, and you're not worried about, you know, little old me, what are they going to think about me? You're worried about how can I help them? And the more that you're concentrating on that, the more opportunities to serve will be attracted to you. At least that's my experience. And I'm so grateful for him because I've grown so much since you know, I'm kind of 16. <laughs> so we grew up in most of the border of order and chaos. Just tie back to David there. Because Santa comes home, we don't grow. Most of out there, you think most people are going to do. So when the voice and vision on the inside is greater than the opinions on the outside, you have a different form of electricity flowing through you. And it works through the nervous system, it works through the spine. And no outside force get in the way of your inner drive unless you allow it to. That comes back to my original, let the infinite source within drive you and nothing finite can get in the way. So just a few daily mantras that I did. Also, I want to tie back to a previous slide that I had is about, you know, if you want to change, your, change something about yourself, have a vision as big as your family. If you want to change, you know, have an impact as great as your state, have a vision as big as your nation. If you want to impact the countries of the world, you have to have an astronomical vision. And astronomical can also be synonymous with universal, I think. Universe, uni, verse, song, one song. So when you connect with that divine presence, pick your mind to the divine, let that one song flow through you, you have the ability to impact the countries of the world. Just wanna, that's an important point I wanted to make out. Um, this is my last slide. This is my dedication to my life. This is my calling and my cause. This is my mission and my message. I want to master this. I want to understand this and know it more than any human being on the face of the earth. I want to become a master chiropractor. <coughs> but who wants to go to a half-ass chiropractor? <laughs> you know, you want to go to someone that wants to, you know, wants to help you. You want to make sure that they're putting all their effort into it. <coughs> Humanity needs us to put all of our effort into this so they can get the most out of your services because they really need it. There are people dying, sick and dying every day for things that we possibly help with. So do, do yourself in the favor and apply 